Hey guys, welcome back to Trek Yards. I am Chancellor Foley. And I am Grand Ambassador Coggins of the Klingon Empire. And today we're here to talk about Discovery Season 2, Laurel's character. And uh, it's been announced she's Chancellor of the Klingon High Council now. Um, so, I mean, we've already done a whole discussion about the Klingons and how they can integrate all the different casts and the mm -hmm. smooth headed and the mm -hmm. imperial Klingons and the so ones we see discovery easy to fix and enhance and we'll see what they do because if you guys realize we learned that she's chancellor in the panel but in the trailer there's not one little bit of Klingons but they've spent all this money on you know Klingon outfits having primary Klingon cast members overarching storylines you know the threat of destroying the entire Klingon homeworld is still there they're probably not going to forget about that um, and, you know, uh, her, her palace and all these things are mentioned in, in the teaser as, as diagrams. So the Klingons will play a part, and yet they're not in the trailer. So why do you think, first of all, Stuart, they were not included in the trailer? Because quite a strong omission. So they didn't show any Klingons because, I think, to negate the negative press that Discovery has had overall, uh, especially with the look of the Klingons, a lot of people are very opposed to that. Um, they focused on the more exploratory, the, you know... TOS canon of Pike, Spock. They wanted to focus on that for the trailer, which is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think one of the main story arcs is, of course, would be the Klingon element. We've mm -hmm. got Ash Tyler still, um, a human Klingon hybrid. Mm -hmm. We've got Lorel, who's now a female chancellor of the Klingon High Council. Mm -hmm. And what that implies, because she does have this device which could blow up the planet. Mm -hmm. Apparently, that's how she got this position. Mm -hmm. So. There's a lot of... So that, that's going to be the, the other story arc. There's going to be the main, you know, Anomalies Pike story arc. But I think intertwined with that, you're going to see some uh, of this Klingon... Hopefully revolution uh, in the Klingon... On the Klingon homeworld to yeah. stir, th stir things up and bring stuff more in line with TOS. Mm -hmm. uh, Klingon established history. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I think they didn't show it in the trailer, though, is because of all the negative press that the Klingons have been getting. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see some of that at San Diego Comic... Or not mm -hmm. San Diego Comic Con. Uh, Star Trek Las Vegas. Because mm -hmm. um, we're filming this before Star Trek Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Just before. Mm -hmm. like a day yes. or two. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if you like the idea of actually being... of that, that move, making a chancellor. Is that what we sort of thought at the time? No, but it, it's it's yeah. a beautiful move. I mean, mm. the, the again, people are going to say, "Oh, well, you know, female Klingon chancellor." They're pushing their, you know, agenda with the female. It's just they're people. Like, just stop. But anyway, it, it, it's funny when they mentioned in the panel that she was a female chancellor and that other Klingons had a problem. I was like, "Oh yeah, she's a female chancellor." Like it hadn't even occurred to me that was a thing. These, yep. I mean, uh, as people say before, you know, these, these, these guys got into space. They're advanced. They're clever. So why is that an issue? We see Klingon women in the Defense Force. We see them all the time. It doesn't mean anything. Even just... in TOS, in yes. um, Day of the Dove, Day of the Dove, there's yep. a female. I mean, yes, predominantly male, but that's because we see yeah. frontline forces. Maybe they're yes. maybe they prefer being other place. Maybe they're in better ships. Who is a diverse race? Who the hell knows? So for, for me, I didn't even clock that. I mean, I'm assuming you know, chance okay, Klingons live longer, yeah. but there's bound to be other I other did. females in the in the history. And it's weird to put a sexist angle on it. Like, like it's better. But that's to... whatever. That's what everybody's been doing about this whole show. I know. I don't like that. It's that new SJW mindset, and it's it bugs me because it takes away from. The, I don't know. The genius of it TOS just... is that it was diverse and no one mentioned it. Okay, like probably people at the time, the people at the time said, oh my god, I rushed on the bridge. But, it, you know, I guess it's sort of doing the same thing, only other people mentioning it, but in this modern age, the best way of showing a strong female character is to make a well-written female character. Not to have her be overly strong, overly smart, overly, you know, pushing way too far. Mary Sue? Yeah, just have him be a really well-written character. I, I talked to this on uh, Colin the other day. Ripley's an amazing character. End, end of statement. You know, it, she, they're not the one trying to make the next badass female a strong character. And so it would be more interesting and make more sense if Laurel was being... Uh, the, thing, the deck was stacked against her because she was House Mogai. Like, you can have um, social prejudice 
why the hell do you have, which is which is sort of racial in a sense, but because of that they are different classes and and from different pla different planets, so you can sort of count the sub you know, variations in in the race because they're different conditions. You know, if you have ten generations living on this planet, you're gonna have slightly different whatevers. You know, so don't go the gender route. That's stupid. The, it's the future. Go the 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 cultural route. House Magai, really? The spies are in charge of the Empire? Ugh. We've had that other times. You know, Duras looked under, looked you know, looked under for the axe and then really appreciated for other things. I mean, that's what happens. You know, not for one second did um, did uh, Azerbaijan in Star Trek Six have any negativity towards her for being a woman chancellor. Yeah, like well, that's it was. She was the daughter of the chancellor who had to take over under emergency situations. So you're gonna have these arguments, and no one fought her for it. No one said, "I know." You might be a daughter, but I've been in charge for thirty years. No, she's a younger woman. She hasn't the same experience. Presumably, you know, crafted by her dad to be chancellor when he became chancellor. But again, it wasn't an issue. So I hope they don't really play that angle because it really degrades the Klingons. They were never sexist specifically because again, it, it's cultural. They have different values. It's it's like is. Is the Ferengi wanting, you know, females being naked, is that sexist? Well, it's, a, it's just the norm to that entire species. So we shouldn't judge them necessarily because it doesn't harm them. That's a species yeah. norm, you know? By the same token, we're not led by, by you know, robots that know better as, as uh, Isaac is in, a, in a, uh, Orville. Should they rule us? Well, because they have better values than us because they're robots. You know what I mean? It doesn't... It, um, so, yeah. a, bit, a, bit of a bit of a social tangent there, but you know what I mean? She's, you know, Chancellor is great, she should be pushing forward and uniting the Empire, and there should be mm -hmm. pushback against that, not her. Apart from the fact that she has a bomb, the way she got Emperor was awful, and my Emperor Chancellor was awful. Um, yeah. And the fact that she's part of Takuvma's guy, uh, yes. group, that offshoot. I can see that being yes. the, the issue, not the fact she's female. Hopefully, um, yes. At least in in universe. I mean, in the real world, all, that's all we're going to hear for the next year is, you know, the SJWs. But, but yeah, actually, yeah, we break it down like that. She's both younger, was is the vibe I get than than the average uh, uh, chancellor. She's from the wrong house. That's not the definitive leader house. She's from a radical cult that no one liked. And, and she's holding the planet hostage. Exactly. So she's dishonorable and a radical and a lower class. So I mean, yes, actually, she's got lots of angles to go against her, just not the 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 the, the gender one. And and in love with a human who used to be a Klingon. Well, they made them that. It's an albino Klingon. So not, well, but he had a Klingon with no house. It's yes. Just, it's it's yeah. It's an interesting <laughs> interesting package they kind of made there, eh? I w one thing that worried me in the panel, as as part of the gender thing, is that they mentioned how she wants to spread the message message of Takuvma and keep that going. And I was thinking, Jesus, really? I thought she evolved from that. I thought she saw that his message was wrong. Yes, he wanted unification, but unification by killing everyone else. That's the wrong message. Don't don't listen to that message. I mean, it's common sense for Klingons to be unified. They were unified in Enterprise for the most part. You know what I mean? You have past examples of, of people coming together. So it's weird that she would want to help, you know, praise the radical that started a war that killed lots of people and didn't do anything for them. Praise the radical. He's a crap. No, don't do that. That's a silly idea. I, 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 I thought she was she was going forward and saying right. He was wrong, but I'll take the best bits. You know, I'm I'm the new, the new progressive because these are the right things to do. I've seen the other side. I've been part of the other side. We can work together. You know, I was hoping she'd be that that interesting voice and help push because she was she was interesting. Cling on by the end. You know. It'd be interesting if they gave her that, you know, bring all the houses together, bring the, the different social orders together, the, the smooth heads, which, which are canon. Can't ex you can't ignore canon the entire time, guys. There are smooth head Klingons, there are ridge head Klingons, and now there are discovery yeah. Klingons. You mentioned Archer, you mentioned Archer on Kronos. You can't. Those are all things that happened in Enterprise. So did the smooth headed. And yeah, even if you retcon, all Klingons look like discovery Klingons. Guess what? The Orgon virus still happened. You still had discovery Klingons that lost their ridges. See, either way, you still have smooth head Klingons that look like humans. Either way, guys. Just less, like, you know, more Klingon than Tyler Vok. Because they had facial hair. So either way, guys. Please use the cannon. Stop retconning it, please. 
Um, and Lorel has such a chance with that. And I think I want to end my thoughts with, I, I love the idea of doing like a Daenerys Targaryen storyline from Game of Thrones, where mm -hmm. they're completely separate. You know, you just cut. You, know, you have seven minutes of every episode is Kronos, because you make the episodes longer. You make them forty minutes of of human guys, seven minutes of Kronos. You jump back to them. Yeah. We hope to be first season. You jump back to them. It's interesting political stuff. It builds a world. You see them knowing the threat as well, but not addressing it. Maybe Lorel is. And by the end of the season, the Lorel says, no, we need to address this. This is also dangerous. I'll send Tyler Vok. I'll trust him to go out. You know, and then, then they sort of meet up at the end. But it's this constant build. So that in then season three, we can focus on Klingons again, but in a very different way. Yeah. Um, is, I think it would be infinitely more interesting. Um, you know, let them have their own culture. Because, again, they didn't do the Klingons well last year. Give them their own space. Let them develop the culture properly. You could really do that. Just what we, we asked to about season one. Didn't quite happen. Different writers, season two, maybe, hopefully, maybe. Hoping so. Yes. <laughs> we always we always have that positive outlook that they could be right. They, yeah. they could do it well. Yeah. Will they? Hopefully. We but we kind of don't have a lot of faith. Anyway, that being said, the future is wide open. The future is unknown. They have so much potential. Mm -hmm. They can definitely do something right. So we're always, we're always, we're always hoping for good things. You know, we want Star Trek oh, to succeed, but even if it's not the best Star Trek, it can still be a really well written show. You know? Yeah. Like you can now argue Enterprise was really good Star Trek for the first two seasons because it was a Star Trek. It's not a very good show. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, so. I hear you. So, guys, I mean, if you want to help us talk about this stuff, because there's a lot to talk about with the upcoming Discovery Season 2. There's going to be a lot once it comes out. We need to, you know, talk about that. We want your help. We need your help. If you can head on over to Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Help us on a monthly basis. If, you know, everybody gave a dollar, we would be happy. A dollar a month. One dollar a month off your credit card. It wouldn't be noticed. And But it makes a huge... A, difference over here on this end so um if you can go over there and help us on patreon please do so also don't forget about trekyards.com there's a donate button there if you want to give us a tip like 20 dollars, say you know, i've loved what you've done for the past three years um you know i haven't been able to contribute but i got 20 bucks almost 20 bucks. four years almost four years right um <laughs> you just go do that trekyards.com that's another way to help and one of the be easiest ways to help if you can't afford mon monetarily is just share the video mm -hmm. around and spread the spread the uh trekyards name out there and get get more people to join us and, and of course join us yes and of course guys subscribe to this channel that's your direct link into the world of trekyards make sure to click that bell notification though because youtube is a bit weird these days click it get notified uh, you see what we do it's every single week multiple times a week and of course, join the conversation at Facebook slash Trekyards. We've got a group and a page. The group is unbelievably active with comments just about everything, anywhere, dozens a day. And they're really great. It's amazing moderators to keep us going. Um, and just a lot of great conversations about Star Trek ships and tech. That's right. So until next time, guys, I'm Captain Ford. I am Commander Kongs. Bye, guys. See you soon.